you're expecting these great things to happen. But but the question is, who's planting the seeds and who's watering the flowers? I don't really know if that is something that we consistently talk about. Now, um, now one thing uh, that I want to jump into uh, today for our consciousness training, and by the way, I just sent you all, a lot of you all just got a text and you just came in to the Zoom. If you want to join the private Zoom or you want to get on the text list, just uh, pull out your phone, text the word uh, morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G to 87948 and I'll send you an invitation and you can join us. We do this every single morning at 10 a.m. We do this seven days a week because we want our brain to be thinking about our economics every single morning. And so what I try to do is uh, use my ex experience to connect the dots on economics in a way that will help you to elevate uh, your thinking. Now, what is point number four? Thank you, Dr. Watts. See, I, I appreciate y'all for keeping me on track because y'all know I got the ADHD thing. And I, it ain't going away. So four steps of building wealth. One, become conscious of where the money is. Number two is make a plan to get the money. Number three is to execute the plan. Number four is to protect what you have. Because all wealth, all wealth actually is, is it's an accumulation process. That's all it is. It's literally stacking. When they literally use that terms like stacking your paper, that's literally what rich people do. Rich people just stack stuff. They accumulate things. They acquire things. They bring in more than they put out. They're, they're financial hoarders, except maybe they're not just hoarding money. Maybe they're hoarding assets or they're hoarding uh, land and hoarding uh, fine art and hoarding shares of stock. I'm a hoarder when it comes to stock. If you went into my stock investment por portfolio, you would find that I own shares of hundreds of companies. Why? Well, because I just, I see a good company. I see a good investment. I say, oh, let me, I got some extra money. Here's an extra hundred dollars. Let me buy some of that. Let me buy some of that. Let me buy some of that. And and it, and it really is a, um, it's, it's something that that becomes a habit and it's a fun habit and it's also emotional to some extent. It's okay for it to be emotional. My emotion is I enjoy the power of being a black man who owns things. I like that. I like being, I like, I like, you know, my, my definition of masculinity that I was raised with is that a masculine male is a person who takes responsibility for things, can, can acquire things, protect things, build things, right? That to me is, is, it was how I was raised. That's what my daddy taught me. And again, maybe your daddy taught something different. I don't know, but that's what my daddy taught. And I like that. That's fun for me. So it's very fulfilling, right? Investing is fulfilling. It's fun to make a plan. And, and I, like, even today, I'm going to work on my estate plan and, uh, and, and leave most of my wealth to the black business school. And, uh, you know, then I have a board that's going to be structured to, to operate the school. And I want to make sure everybody has plenty of resources to work with. Like these are fun things for me because to me, it's all part of being somebody in this world. And a lot of that being somebody in this world ain't got nothing to do with getting approval from a white man. There ain't no white man on the planet that is going to either give me or deny me the right to be somebody in this world. I don't seek approval from from I don't really seek approval from hardly anybody, actually. Uh, I